time for their heels to tap it on the floor. Because as soon as they got to church and sit down, their heels was tapping the floor. They were already ready to get in and worship the Lord. Think about it. No, 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 no guitars, no tambourines, no cymbals, had nothing. It's all, what you say, a cappella? Is that how you say that? And they would get in and sing and worship the Lord and dance and shout because they had the music in their heart. Praise God, praise God. Well, I want to tell you, I thought while, we, while I'm talking about with us to Amos chapter 7 this morning. Uh, we talk about our trials and the tests of our trials and so on. We talk about them often because that's the thing that's on our heart and our mind and our time. The trials that we're going through. The difficulties. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> Jesus. And uh, while we're going through those trials, we've got our, all the time we have our shoulders slumped and we don't feel like singing. We don't feel like, especially don't feel like shouting, dancing, we're just down. But let me tell you something. When you pray, when we pray, yes. Right during our trial, right, right during our test, yes. then when we do have the victory, because we're yes. shouting right on through. Yes. Right on through the trial, we're just right. continuing to shout right on through it. Oh, and then when we do have the victory, <laughs> then we can have a trial. Yes. Right. Well, we've already shouted right on through the trial, right, right while he's sticking it right in our face. Yes. Right. We've done yeah. shouted yeah. right through it. Amen. And then when we do get through it, amen, we can just sit their oh. foot right down on his neck. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We come through that one. We come through it with great victory. Oh, amen. God is a mighty God. Yes. Preacher, you don't know what I'm dealing with. No, I don't. I don't. But you don't know what I've dealt with either. That's right. Right. Amen. And then we can come through it. Yes. We can come through it. Amen. We can and we can win. And uh, I may not preach much this morning. Uh, the last couple of weeks with our Sunday school lessons, it's, I've done a lot of focus just on that. And uh, because uh, uh, when you're doing <coughs> some things that I don't know much about, and, and most of the time we just speculate on it, and I, I'd like to at least know a little bit what I'm talking about. And so we're going to spend a lot of time there, and then, of course, we've got other things that we have to do. We have to do. God knows about that. You have to work. These young folks have to go to school. Uh, uh, you've got things that you have to take care of. God understands that. He understands that as long as we don't neglect him when we do have time. That's the problem. People are neglecting God when they do have time. But Amos today, Amos... Chapter 7. Let's start at verse 7. <laughs> Amen. Amos said, Thus he showed me. And behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And he said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not again pass by them any more. And the high places of Isaac shall be made desolate. And the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amosiah, the priest of Bethel, <laughs> said to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all of his words. <coughs> For thus Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go flee thee away into the land of Judah, Judah, and eat, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more in Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Then answered Amos unto Amaziah, I was no prophet, 
and Amen. for Isaiah prophet's son, but I was an herdsman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word today. Now, <coughs> Judah was in the process of backsliding too. Judah and Israel, divided kingdom. And uh, But God would not have them uh, carried away into captivity until a few years, seven years later after Israel was carried into, uh, uh, was Israel was just not carried into captivity. They were just annihilated. They were just scattered. Scattered. Various nations. And uh, by this happening, before this happened, God sent prophets into Israel, warning them of the things that were to come. Now, they could not uh, uh, get a hold of God in the condition that they were in for themselves. I mean, here they were, uh, uh, golden calf worshipers. Right. Something that got them and Israel in trouble centuries before that. When, uh, uh, before they ever got out of the wilderness. Uh, 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 worship and idols got them in trouble. That was against the commandments of God. And I don't care if it was the king's chapel and the king's court. As long as they were in idolatry, they were not going to get a hold of God. God would send somebody in to them to preach to them and to prophesy to them. And that's what he did. That's what he was doing here. Amen. And uh, they didn't want to hear it. God told uh, the prophet, I'm going to drop a plumb line right in, right in. You know, plumb line is something that's straight up and down. And uh, Brother Bradham uses them quite often to make sure the wall's straight. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you helping me here? Helping God. And, uh, and their wall was so crooked and so messed up, God said, I'm not even going to come by that way anymore. Give them ample opportunity to repent today. Amen. Are you helping me preach? Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And the prophet, I mean, the Amaziah, the, uh, the, over the, you know, the king's court and the king's chapel and so on. Jeroboam hadn't even heard it yet. He sends back and he said, Jeroboam, the guy's out here and he's talking and he's committing an act of treason. He's saying that the enemy's going to come carry us all away and you're going to die. Well, he still got no answer from Jeroboam. And so the Amaziah tells him, he said, go ahead and get out of our country. We're not going to feed you here. You know, he said, go back to your country where you can get bread. You get sustenance. Somebody take care of you back there. You prophesy that stuff back there. Somebody pay you for it. <laughs> but here we're not, we're not going to help you. We're not going to do anything for you. Amen. You're just going to have to starve to death if you preach that here. And don't you know they're still trying to starve men of God out that's trying to tell the truth? Amen. 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 Church spring up here. Church spring up there. Somebody else spring one over here. Amen. Just so they can have somebody to tell them what they want to hear. Are you helping me preach? Amen. Oh, God, I wish the Lord would help me here. Amen. So what, uh, what was I told Jeroboam? He said, Amos has conspired against you. Amen. And against the house of Israel. And the land is not able to bear all of his words. They're not able to bear there. It has several different meanings but in the Hebrew. But, but he's talking about that they're not able to comprehend it. They just can't comprehend it. Now, now listen to this. They couldn't comprehend a man's simple preaching, as Amos was, he said, I wasn't, I wasn't a prophet. I wasn't a prophet's son. I was just doing my job, everyday work, and God called me off of my job, and he told me to come up here and tell you people what thus saith the word of the Lord. And they couldn't comprehend it. He hadn't been to prophet school. Now, you mean they went to prophet school back then? Sure they did. Amen. Uh, whenever uh, over in 2 Kings, whenever uh, uh, 
Elisha was the prophet, the head prophet. And they was building them another another place, the school of the prophets. And uh, uh, because what they had was getting too narrow, too constrained, too small for them. And so they were building a bigger place to live in <laughs> and where they could teach the prophecies of God and where God would move on these men and they would prophesy again. Amen. And Amos had never been to any of those. Amen. And God just simply tells, tells him, I want you to say, thus saith the word of the Lord. Yeah. And they couldn't comprehend the simple preaching of a simple prophet. Okay. And I'm going to tell you today, the world still cannot comprehend the message, the real message of God to his people. Right. That's the reason they continue to water it down. That's the reason they continue to take the scripture and to make another version. And then they'll make another version off of that version. Yeah. And I heard a man preach not too awful long ago. I was at somebody's house and several months ago. And they had the TV on. And they had one of the popular preachers. And he was saying the Bible says this. And the Bible says that. And while I was listening I can't remember all of what the Bible says, but Brother Harold, I got enough sense to know if somebody's quoting from the Bible and they get anywhere close to it, I know it's in God's Word. Yes. Hallelujah. But for what he was coming off with, I had no idea where he was coming from, and I wonder if the, co if the congregation had, had any idea about all of his smiles and all of his little antics that he was putting on. I wonder if they had any idea of what he was saying. Amen. And uh, But but uh, they wanted watered down for them. But when you preach the unadulterated word of God, they cannot comprehend it. Amen. Oh, God, would you help us here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, the world cannot comprehend this Christian life the prayer. Sometimes I wonder if we are even comprehending the necessity of our prayer life. Come on. with me? We was good while we were shouting. But now we got to pray. We got to pray to be able to live to where God can use us and where God can show us things. Where God can deal with our lives, we've got to pray. Yeah. For several weeks here, I taught about prayer in the Sunday school class out here. I think some of us grabbed hold of it. You can see the results in our worship service. Oh, glory. Some of us still needs to grab hold of it and comprehend what we really, what's really going on when we pray. God. The devil don't have a problem when we pray yeah. as long as he's got my mind so cloudy yeah. that I can't think. Yeah. And I get upset, confused. Now, before you get me already in the first stages of dementia, <laughs> how many times the devil ever gets you upset and confused? You're trying to pray. That's the reason we got to shut the door on that confusion and being upset to what we can get to pray through. Right. We go one week, and then we go another week, and then we go another week, and then we go five or six weeks like that. Pretty soon we're just accustomed to saying a few words and feeling good about it, and we have prayed through and got into the heaven, heavenly realm. Right. That's right. Pray through to where we got to where. God is talking to us while we're talking to him. Right. Well, I'm going to like have to move on. But I'm going to tell you, the world cannot comprehend a life of prayer. And I mentioned this several times, sometimes while I was teaching Sunday school, and sometimes while I've been preaching, of the group that we come up under and the pray, prayer warriors that we went to church with yes. and visited their homes and they visited ours. Yes. And we never prayed. 
less than an hour. We never got down and prayed less than an hour. You hear me? Most of the time, we would pray anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours. Because once we got in the spirit, as Sister Esther said earlier in the service today, we didn't care whether we ever got out of it or not. We just wanted to stay there. Linger on with it. I remember Sister Steph saying a few times that, that when the Spirit of the Lord began to move, she'd tell me uh, maybe later or after church sometime, she said when the Spirit of the Lord was moving like it was here tonight, she was, I was afraid to even get a deep breath, afraid it would stop. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Where are we today oh, in our worship? Oh, oh hallelujah. Oh, hey, Amen. And we let the Spirit of the Lord linger among us. Oh, hallelujah. While we lift our hands and we worship and we glorify and we praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't comprehend it all. And I'm going to preach a long time on it, but I'm going to say a few things here. The world still cannot comprehend the fact of a life of separation. I hear it everywhere I go. Tell them get weary with it. I don't want to get weary with it to the point that I get on the edge. And I have done that. I don't think I'm the only one that ever done that. Get weary with something until we get on the edge. Because if God's called us to preach the gospel, he's called us to preach the gospel with the love of God behind it. And not on the edge. But I hear it so much about this legalism stuff. Until it began to wear me thin. Yeah. Yeah. Because holiness is not legalism. No, it's, not. Right. it's not legalism. Separation from the world is not legalism. I didn't separate from the world to get saved. I separated from the world because I got saved. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. When I got saved, I didn't want any more part of that. Amen. I, I remember a sister yeah. step mentioned one time that it's one of her boys. And, and, and I think all of them are going on to meet the Lord now. And, and they said, Mama, if I got saved, would I have to quit racing my cars? They built these race cars, you know. Right. Amen. And would I have to stop doing that? Right. And she said, I really don't know some. But she said, I'll tell you what. If you really get filled up with it just right, would you even want to? Right. Hallelujah. Right. Praise right. God. Right. Would you even want to go to those places? And do those things again if you really got filled up with the power of God in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. But when we're not filled up with it, then this starts taking place. And that starts taking place. But we live a life of separation because we love God. We know that God is a holy God and we desire His holiness. I'm not going to tell you that God don't move among these other circles because he does. He does move there. He loves them. You hear me? He loves them. Amen. They are his creation just like we are his creation. And he loves them. And he desires that we, he could send us in among them the way he sent Amos among northern Israel there. Hallelujah. But they couldn't stand his words Amen. And it'll get to where they won't be able to bear ours either. They'll either have to get right or cut us off. Are you helping me preach? Amen. I feel the presence of God here. I said people will either have to get right or they will eventually cut us off. Amen. Because Christianity, we never started to be popular. We never started. It wasn't started in this to, to win a popularity contest. We, uh, it was starting to get people, amen, saved under the blood, separated from the world. In the olden days, in the early Christianity, Brother Bill, it got them out of paganism. They quit worshiping more than one God. Amen. They quit their idolatry. They quit their uh, uh, adultery, their fornications, their lasciviousness, and all these works of the flesh. They stopped these things because they got right with God. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. And the world couldn't bear them. They couldn't bear the New Testament church. And they really can't bear us today. Right. Hallelujah. But it's our responsibility. 
ability to take this with authority and with power behind our preaching. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't have much to preach on today. Amen. But we got the law, and it's in the ceremonial law, the offering of the various sacrifices for, for sin. And Jesus came, and he, all that ceremonial junk was nailed to the cross of Christ. I said, junk, it's, it's not really junk. It wasn't to them. It was necessary. But it was nailed to the cross of Christ. Yeah. They didn't do that anymore. Right. Matter of fact, the writer of Hebrews said, if you, you know, uh, once you turn to anything <laughs> else for salvation besides Christ, if you read the whole thing there, that remains no more sacrifice. You turn back to that again, there remains. You fall away from this and go back into that again, there remains no sacrifice. You've crucified him afresh and brought him to open shame. Amen. Then they had the civil law. They lost that. Whenever they were carried away captive into Babylonia, into Babylon, they got to come back to their homeland and rule themselves somewhat, but they were still under other people's rule. And so they never got their civil law back until 1948. But the moral law of God has never, never went away. It's still just as much today as it ever was. That law of living right. Uh, Sister Esther decided to get her a new washer and dryer, and she took some money I think she had for to get her back porch built she'd been working on, and she decided that lady was going to do it, and so she went and got her a new washer and dryer when Bethany found one on sale where she works. And she got both of them, really what she costed her for one. I think Sister Michelle, Michelle got one too. And uh, so when they brought her dryer uh, last week, Washer and dryer. Washer was good, but somebody hit that dryer with a forklift and bent it up real bad. And so we had to reject it. And they brought one back Friday. Friday. And it wasn't the same group. And there was a black boy and a white boy. And the white boy looked real rough. I mean, he was a rough dude. But the black fellow, he was all cleaned and dressed up and, you know, presentable, if you will, to go in somebody's home and do that kind of work. And uh, he got to doing the work, and he looked up at me, and he said, hey, you a preacher? I ain't said nothing about being a preacher. I ain't said nothing about religion. I ain't said nothing about anything. He said, are you a preacher? And I said, how'd you figure that out? He smiled real big, and he said, well, I could be a prophet. I said, are you a preacher? Yeah. He said, I'm struggling, but I'm just figured he was too. Well, we got to talking. We got to talking. The old white boy, he went out of there, man. Oh, yeah. no, we hey, man. He got away from us, waited on the other fellow outside. We got to talking. Now, he believed like us, and uh, but he's still Pentecostal, and you can take it from there. And uh, I said, well, I tell you what, I tell you what, my, co my cousin told me. He said, let's agree on the 80% and let's go to and go with the other 20% that we disagree on. And so we got to talking. The presence of God began to move. All began to feel the glory of the Lord. Tears come up in his eyes. And he got talking about this tradition, this tradition. People were taking part of it and throwing the rest of it out. I said, that don't mean we throw it all out. I said, the moral law of God still stands today just like it always did. What was an abomination in the Old Testament is still an abomination today. I said, get you a Bible. If you don't have one, I said, I'm sure you do. And I said, study it. Study it to the point that if you've taken the scripture out of context and you can read the whole chapter, amen, or perhaps the whole entire book, and you have to do that before you can <coughs> understand Hebrews, you have, to, you have to read the whole book. You can't just read one verse and pull it out of Hebrews and think you've got the whole, uh, a, a whole book, uh, a whole chapter conquered. Amen. You've got to read the whole thing. I said, read it. And if you can tear down your doctrine, amen, build again on the Word, the foundation of the Word of God. But he got excited. Amen. He knew he had to go. And he said, would you and your wife pray for me before I go? Hallelujah. 
And I hollered, Sister Esther, she was already in the kitchen. I said, this fellow wants us to pray for him. Amen. We walked in there and laid hands on that brother. And it's just like a hole opened up in the sky. The power of God began to fall. He began to shake and speak in other tongues. Sister Esther cut loose with it. And it wasn't long till I was talking while, just like they was. Amen. The Lord come by and helped us. Hallelujah. Amen. But we've got to let people understand that, that the law of living right is not tradition. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The law of sanctification is not tradition. Hallelujah. These things come from God's word. And God puts them in our heart and instills them in our heart and life. Yes, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Don't you love the Lord today? Don't you love the Lord today? Oh, hallelujah. Loving Jesus. Desiring God's way. Desiring God's work. Desiring God's law. Desiring it in our hearts. That's why we seek after him. We desire it. Oh, hallelujah. And if the land is not able to bear us, if they're not able to comprehend us the way they couldn't comprehend Amos, amen, just live it anyway. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell us again, church. Amen. Let's don't live it in such a way, Brother Harold, that we look at the world and we tell them, well, I'm so much better than you are because I've got this and I've got that. Amen. We're never going to get the world changed as long as we've got a nose stuck up in the air attitude. Right. Amen. But the world begins to change when they can feel this gospel of love. Oh, hallelujah. I said it's a gospel of love. God so loved the world that he gave Jesus for you. On, Hallelujah. Amen. And if he so loved the world that he gave Jesus for you, amen, and if you've got him in your heart, you're going to so love the world, amen, that you, I'm talking about love the people of the world, amen, that you will have them, amen, on your heart and on your mind, and you want them to come to God just like you came to God. I don't want to hold us all day. I don't want to stay till we get done. Let me tell you something. If you are getting accustomed to just walking among your people every day, well, that's just my son or my daughter, my grandchild. God will bring them in one day. And you just keep waiting. And you don't pray. For them like you should. Yes. I preach, I can pray it. I said like you should. Yes. Seeking God with a broken heart for them. Yes. Desire God to bring them to where He can use them. Yes. Hallelujah. Brother R said it better than anybody I've ever seen. He's got a boy that's lost. And uh, <coughs> before he completely got out of church, he was preaching one night at a place and uh, boy was there and he said dad you went just a little bit long tonight didn't you and he called him by his name and he said yeah I sure did and it was for you I was reaching for you son Yes. you're losing mm -hmm. you're losing ground right. you're backsliding yeah, God. the boy went on ahead and got on out he would have listened to counsel went on ahead and left left the church and doing things that's contrary to the law of God and so on and so forth. But the Lord said, I've turned him over to God. I said, Lord, however you fix it, whatever you do to get his soul saved, you do it your way. Are you still with me? He said, Big people word. have told him, are you crazy? Are you crazy to turn him over to God in such a way? Keep him out of hell. What if this happens? What if that happens? Oh, God. And he looked and said, I looked at him and he said, what? Can't you trust the judgment of God? That's right. Yeah. Oh, 
Can't you trust God's judgments? Woo, I feel the presence of God. Can't you trust God's judgments on these matters? To let God do it His way and His time, however He sees necessary to bring that soul to salvation. We'll pray that God send conviction. And Sister Kim and God begins to trouble the waters of their soul. And they'll run to us, Mom, Dad, Grandpa, Grandma, Grandpa, Mama, however how they say it. Would you pray for me? Would you pray that things will settle down in my life? And then here we'll go praying right against what we ask God to do. Let's trust the judgments of God. Let's trust the judgments of God. I feel like talking to us today. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just simply trust the judgments of God. God's moving for us. We're going to have revival. The devil jumps by and he says, well, you're just going to have your little group that's coming here and we're not a large group like we have been in time past. And we're not going to have any visitors help you and you're going to have revival and, and you're going to have revival like that. And I just said, we have revival every weekend. Yes, we are. <laughs> For the last three weeks, we've had revival every service. Somebody say amen. amen. We've had revival. Hallelujah. And when Brother Asher gets here tomorrow night, we're still going to be in revival. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. Well, glory to God. God is still in the business of saving souls and drawing us to Him. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Would we stand this morning while we come and sing? Could we just stand? We'll open up the altar. I want you to pray. Pray for revival. If you haven't been praying, pray for revival. Pray that God will send revival in your soul. I've said this many, many times. Brother Nelms wouldn't let us have a revival over places when I went to church over there. And he just said, Russ Barks, we're not ready for a revival. We're just going to have a preacher come here and have a series of meetings. He's going to leave and we're going to be as dead as we are now. <laughs> he just plain spoken with it. And he told the people, he said, well, you pray. You pray for it and you get a whole revival for yourself. And we can have a revival. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I love those people there. And I didn't leave because I wanted to leave. I left because, left because the Lord led me away. Brother Bill, they never did. They never did get in revival. I'm going to tell you, it's serious. That revival starts with you. As an individual. Well, when you get revived, then you can see others begin to get revived around you. Come on now, while they're singing, show me somebody got a song. Amen. Come on, this all. Can we come fill them up? Come fill them up. Let's pray today. Hallelujah. Let's pray today.
as the cup. Did they have Thomas uh, Jones and Renee? Their children with them today. And they come. They got here a little late. They're going somewhere else. They, they got here a little late and uh, going somewhere else and they weren't having church. And then they come over here. And I said, Well, they got here just in time. They got here just in time to know the revival was given out. And, uh, and I know when he come in, I thought, I'm not sure. Sure. I think the last time I seen him, he had, had, had a beard. And so I said, I'm not sure. But that's not Thomas, he's got a clone. <laughs> but it's Thomas, and I'm glad he's with us. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, he's coming back tonight, and especially throughout the revival next week. You got another word anywhere? I've been kind of slack on praying over these requests in these box. And I know that may be kind of like silly to some people. No, it's not. But it's important when our lost wow. people, yes, the pictures right. are there. Yes. And things, and we use that as a point of contact to pray over them that God will save their souls. Every now and then I'll send them a text, have them thinking about them, and they don't get anything back. But at least they know I'm still thinking. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. glory to God in heaven. Glory, we can lay hands on this today. Faith, believe in God that you're reaching and getting a hold of hearts, Lord. Getting a hold of lives. Oh, precious God. Would you move mightily, Lord? In Jesus' name, Lord. Move in these things. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, Lord. things that they're having in October. If, it, if nobody's not going, then I still need to contact them and let them know they're not going. But if you are going, we'll make preparations to get there. Let Sister Anna know. Oh, hallelujah. 